Hi guys, Anne McKinnell here. Thanks for joining me. Today I'd like to show you how I like to use Aurora HDR with its layers and layer masks to apply different types of effects to different parts of my image. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so here we have these four images that I made uh, just a few days ago actually. And this, I picked these because I thought it was a really good challenge for Aurora. Um, I actually wasn't expecting it to turn into very much because of the very intense dynamic range that we're dealing with here. So let's take a look at this full screen. So this is the zero exposure and then I did a plus one, a plus two, and a plus three. So I have these four different exposures and I'm going to combine them together in Aurora HDR and see if we can get any kind of a decent result out of this. So I'm going to shift select those four and I'll go file, export with preset and in Aurora I'll go open original images. Okay, so it's going to show me my options here. So I'm going to click this and I do want to select chromatic aberration removal. And I also want to select ghost reduction because you can see there's a bit of this Ocotillo plant here that is sticking up into the sky and it will, it may have moved a little bit in between the exposures but also, as the exposures got longer, it could have blurred a little bit. So I definitely want to turn the ghost reduction on, and I will just let Aurora pick the settings that it wants, and uh, we'll try that to start. And I'll also select alignment, and I'll go create HDR. Okay, so here we are with our base image in Aurora as it has combined those four exposures. So what I usually do is I play around with the sliders first and decide what kind of effects I like on various parts of the image. So I'll just show you what I mean. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do here actually is just increase the shadows so that I can see what's going on in the foreground. Now I might not end up having the shadows at this level later. I just want to be able to see for now. So I'm going to start with HDR Enhance and see what that does. So I'm just going to increase this a little bit. Okay, so I like what's going on in the foreground here. I like the kind of extra detail I get. I don't like the crunchiness in the sky. So I like how HD, HDR Enhance looks in the foreground. So I'm just going to put that back. Okay, Smart Tone. Let's see what that does. Uh, I don't like that at all. I'm just going to double click that, put that back. Let's take a look at some of the other sliders I like to use the most. HDR Structure. I'll try that one. And I don't like that at all anywhere. I'll double click to put that back. HDR Microstructure. Um, I like how this is adding a little bit of detail to the foreground again, but I don't like what's going on with the sky. Put that back. HDR Denoise, I'm probably going to want that on the sky because that'll smooth out the sky, but I don't want to smooth out any details in the foreground. So HDR Denoise is something that I might want to apply to the sky. Okay. Image Radiance, I uh, do like the glowy effect there. I'm not sure how that's going to work after I make all the other adjustments I want though. So I'm probably going to leave Image Radiance until last after I've done everything else and then I'll see how that looks. But that's a definite possibility. Okay, let's keep going here. Polarizing filter. Uh, no, I don't like what that's doing at all. HDR details boost. Let's try the small details. I often like that. Okay, yeah, I do. I like what's going on uh, in the foreground. I probably won't need very much, but I like it in the foreground and not in the sky. So you can see how some of these filters I like to use in the detailed areas of my photo and other I like to use in the sky part of the photo, and they're rarely the same ones. 
So, everything here has been set back to normal. Just double checking. Oh, except the shadows. Okay, so I'm just going to set that back to normal. So here's how we started. Actually, what you, what you can do is just go reset all, just to make sure that everything is the way I started. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new layer because the effects that I'm going to do first, I only want to apply to the foreground. So I'm going to add a new layer so that later I'll be able to add a layer mask and tell Aurora where exactly I want those effects to be applied. So I'll just click the plus button and go add new adjustment layer. Okay, so now as I'm going along here, I'm only going to pay attention to what's happening in the foreground. I'm not going to care how any of these effects look on the sky for now. Okay, so I am going to, first of all, I'm going to open up the shadows again so I can see what's happening. Uh, okay, and then I'll adjust the exact level of the shadows after I'm finished here. So I'm going to pick HDR Enhance, add a little bit of that. I'm also going to change the white balance here. Let's try cloudy. Uh, still looks a bit blue. Shade, that's better. Okay. I think that that has more accurate colors for this um, Choya. So I like that. And I did a bit of HDR Enhance. I also liked the HDR microstructure a little bit on the foreground. So I'm going to pick that, add a little bit of that. And I don't want any denoise. I don't want polarizing filter. I will do a little bit of details boost. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this layer off and back on again and just see if that is what I want. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use the layer mask. So I'll click this brush icon right here and I'm going to pick the gradient mask. And that will allow me to simply click and drag to draw my gradient. So I'm going to click where I want the gradient to start and drag up to where I want the gradient to end. So I'll click and draw it like this. Okay, so what my purpose with this mask is, is to apply everything to the foreground and not to the sky, right? So I want to bring this down so that everything below this line is affected 100%. So, because I want all of the details in these choyas, and then it gradually fades up, right? But I don't want it to touch the sky, so I think I'll kind of go like this. All right, and then as you can see, it is going to touch the sky in parts of these areas. So what I'm going to do now is just grab this again, and now I'm going to take the brush, and I am going to paint out any of this effect that's touching the sky. So I'll go over here, I'll click Erase, and I'll take the size of this down a little bit, and softness is good. Opacity, I'll take that down to say 69, 70%, something like that. And I'm just going to go along the sky part here and make sure that none of that effect touches the sky. So I can click this eyeball button next to the mask to see exactly where my mask is. And so I can just refine that a little bit like that and want to make sure there's none there. Okay, good. So I'm going to double click here where it says layer one and I'm going to rename this layer so that I can remember exactly what's going on and I'll call it foreground. All right, excellent. So now let's take a look at the sky. I'm gonna add a new layer to deal with the sky. Add a new adjustment layer. Okay, now everything I'm going to do, to do now, I will only pay attention to what's happening in the sky because I'm going to mask out this effect on the foreground later. So 
I've got the white balance here set at shade. I'm going to take that back to as shot because I like the way the blues are in the sky. Did that change? I better just check. Oh yeah, okay. There we go. So, um, contrast, I think, is one thing that I'm going to like in the sky. So I'm going to try adding a bit of contrast. And yeah, I really like the way that looks in the sky. Okay, very nice. And vibrance, ooh, do I dare? Maybe I will add a tiny bit. Yeah, just a, just a little bit. I really don't want to go too heavy handed on the vibrance. Oops. Okay. All right. Now I'm not going to want any structure, but I will add some denoise and, and make it a bit smooth. Maybe some smooth, a little bit of boost. I'm going to use this uh, visibility icon to turn that off and back on again so I don't smooth it out too much. That looks pretty good. And image radiance, again, I'm going to leave that because I don't want to um, use the mask on the image radiance. So I think that that is going to be it for the sky. So I can just check using the visibility icon here on layer one and see if this is enough for what I want to do with the sky. So I'll just turn that off and turn that back on again. Okay, good. Yeah, that's great. So I need to apply the mask. So this only is affecting the sky and not the foreground. So I'll click this brush icon. And again, I'm going to pick gradient mask. But I'm going to draw my gradient the other way. I want it to be 100% in the sky and uh, fade out in this area of the image. So again, I want to make sure that this doesn't touch this Choya. Um, and I want it to fade out near the bottom of the sky. So I can kind of go like this. All right. And I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to grab this again and change it to brush. And this time I want to paint it on to those parts of the sky that are currently, um, or sorry, no, I had that backwards. I want to erase it from the parts of the mountain. Let's just turn the mask on so that we can see what we're doing here. So what I want to do is erase it on this part of the mountain because I don't want any of this effect to be there, but it is because of the graduated filter. So I am just going to erase it. I'll make it my brush a little smaller. That's fine. And I'm just going to go like this and make sure that none of this is touching the mountain. I can turn the mask back on to double check. And I'll add a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So the effect is still graduating out in the sky part, but I don't want it to touch the mountain. So there we go. Okay. So I'm going to double click here where it says layer one and re rename this layer sky. So I know later when I want to go back, if I want to refine anything, which layer I need to be working with. So I can turn off this sky enhancement layer like that. Off. On again. And I'll turn the foreground off. And on again. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Now let's take a look at that image radiance. I do like that. Um, not really sure if I want to apply to the whole image or the same as the sky or what I want to do there. So I'm going to create a new layer just for that. So I'm going to add another layer and go new adjustment layer. And I'll scroll down here to Image Radiance, and I'll just turn that up. Okay. So I do like this. I really like it in the sky especially. Um, I like it in the whole image. It is making these shadows a little dark, 
there is a shadow slider here just for that purpose. So I'll increase this and bring those shadows back up again. Okay. So I'll use the visibility icon here to turn it off and back on and make sure this is what I want. Hmm. Yeah, I do like it. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So one thing that I notice here is that if you look at this saguaro cactus, it's looking a little fuzzy around the edge. And if I turn this off, this image radiance that I just did, that sharpness comes back. So I like the image radiance on the image, but I don't like what it's doing to this saguaro and these other plants here where they meet the sky. So I'm going to use the mask again to filter that out. Okay. So I will, oops, so I'll open that there. So I'm going to use the mask on layer one. This is the layer that we're currently working on. I'll pick the brush. Okay. And I want to erase. You can make sure you're on erase and not paint. So I'll erase it from this part of the frame. I'm going to just make my brush a little smaller. I'll make it a little less soft around the edges. Maybe a little bit more. And opacity 69%, that's fine. So I'm just going to start painting this, or I should say erasing. I'm going to erase that effect so I get those details back. And I'm going to do the same here around this Ocotillo branches and over here on this side too, because I don't want these to look fuzzy. Okay. So again, I'm going to turn that effect off and back on again. Good. Now I'll rename this layer and I'm going to call this one uh, Radiance. Good. Now, now what I usually do is just double check I've got everything the way I want it to be. Okay, so let's start with the foreground. I'm going to turn the foreground off and back on again. Yeah, I like that. Sometimes I find I end up going back and, and turning turning down the uh, sharpness a little bit, but I, I know I think I like this. Mm. You know what, I'm going to change my mind about one thing though. Remember the shadows. So on this foreground layer, the shadows, I had moved all the way up just so that I could see what I was doing. And I don't think that quite looks natural to me. Um, I'm going to turn this down because, I mean, it was dark. You can see from the sky how dark it was. Here's the zero. So I'm just going to move it up a bit so I can see the details, but I don't want it to be super HDRE. I like to keep them realistic. So I think I'll put it about there so you can see the details. Yet you still know that this is a late evening image, twilight here. Okay. Now on the sky, what do I think of that? I'll click the sky layer and I'm going to turn that off and back on again. I think I might try increasing the vibrance a little bit more. How about just a little bit more contrast? Just make it... Yeah. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. The Radiance layer, I'm clicking on that and I'll turn it off and on again. That looks good to me. So as a final step, I'm going to add um, a vignette. So I'm going to add yet another layer, add a new adjustment layer, and I'm going to scroll down here and I'll add the post crop vignette. There we go. And I do like to add this inner brightness. I really like the way that looks. Okay, so maybe I went too far with the vignette. So I'll turn that off and on. Okay. Now as a final step, 
I am going to use this visibility icon at the very top and that will give me a preview of what this looked like when we started and what it looks like now. So I'll click this. That was how we started and that's how it ends. Okay, now before I forget, I want to rename this layer again so I remember what I did and I'm going to call this vignette. All right, so you can see how I like to use the, uh, the layer masks in Aurora to apply different effects to different parts of the image. This really gives you a lot of versatility without having to go in and out of the program, you know, using it in conjunction with Photoshop or something like that. I can do all of this right here within Aurora. Okay, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.